previous section of this SCI multi-site training, we have already introduced the multi-site orchestrator as one of the main functional components of the SCI multi-site architecture. In this section, we are going to talk a little bit more about the role of the multi-site orchestrator for provisioning tenant policies. We're going to first clarify again how the provisioning of tenant policies is one of the main functional roles that the multi-site orchestrator covers, and from that point of view, the multi-site orchestrator represents the single source of truth for tenant policies. We'll then introduce the concept of schemas and templates as ways to provision and define the tenant policies and push them to the different epic domains. And in the last part of the section, we're going to talk about importing already existing policies from an epic domain, something that usually is referred as brownfield support. As we already mentioned, the multi-site orchestrator represents the single pane on glass from where provisioning tenant policies. The idea is that independently from the fact that the policies are site local or built using stretch object, uh, all these objects should always be managed for a given tenant from the multi-site orchestrator. That's usually the typical question that is asked, should I configure things on MSO, should I configure things on EPIC? MSO represents the single source of truth of the configuration for all the managed tenant. Sure, you could leave a tenant configuration on EPIC and never manage that tenant from MSO, but as we will clarify in the next section that talks about inter-site communication for endpoints of a given tenant, every time there is a requirement to establish connectivity between sites through the inter-site network, the policies and the contract between EPGs need to be provisioned from the multi-site orchestrator. So my recommendation would be whenever you introduce the multi-site orchestrator in a multi-site architecture, start managing all the tenant configuration from the multi-site orchestrator itself. As we already clarified in the previous section of this training, uh, some of the functionality that reside on EPIC will remain on EPIC, and also some of the object or tenant policies that are present on EPIC will not be present on MSO because the goal of MSO is to expose 90% plus of the policies that are usually used by customers. So we don't want to have a one-to-one 100% -one mapping because we want to try to keep the interface of the multi-site orchestrator and the knobs and functionalities that the multi-site orchestrator allows you to configure for a given tenant quite clean and lean compared to what we have on EPIC. Now, what about the configuration and the definition of these tenant policies? How do we define tenant policies on the multi-site orchestrator? Here, we introduce the terms of schemas and templates. Now, I want to clarify this up front. Schema and templates are just constructs that allow to create a sort of hierarchy on how you define these policies. In reality, the policies are always defined in terms of object that you should be already familiar with from an EPIC perspective, like EPGs, application network profiles, contract, bridge domains, VRFs. So the object remains the same that uh, you should be familiar with in a CI, is just how you organize them in a hierarchical way on the multi-site orchestrator. So the schema is a container of template. Uh, it's just like a drawer where you put all your template in. And the template is really the construct that contains the specific policies, the application network profiles, the EPGs, the VRF, the bridge domain, the contract. And one important point to clarify is that before actually creating the configuration inside the template, you need to associate the template to a tenant. So there is always an association one-to-one -one template to tenant. The schema is not associated to a tenant. In fact, inside a schema, you could put templates that are associated to different tenants if you want. We will see that typically that's not the case and most of the customer uh, tend to uh, assign one or more schemas to a given tenant because it allows to organize uh, better the policies for that tenant. But technically speaking, the association to a tenant is only done at the template level. So here you see I have a site one template which is associated to tenant one. Once I define my policies in the template, 
these policies obviously have not been provisioned or rendered in any fabric. I need to associate the template to one or more site. In this case, I have a site one template and I associated that site one template with the fabric one, site one. Once I do that, I then have the capability of deploy the template. And when I push the deploy template button on MSO, the policy that I define in the template will be pushed to the Epic domain control in site one and will become an effective policy at the Epic level. So it will be render, which is the usual term that we used. I could then define another template, which I call in this example, the stretch template, map it to the same tenant, tenant one, and define inside that template all the objects that I want to exist at the same time across site one and site two. That means that I will associate that template to site one and site two. Then when I deploy the template, then the policy and the configuration will be pushed at the same time to site one and site two and be rendered at the epic level. So this is the important point to clarify is that in the current implementation, the template represents the atomic unit of change for configuration and policy, which essentially means that when I deploy a template, that configuration will always be pushed at the same time to all the sites that are mapped to that uh, template. If I want to have different configuration push at different times, I need to divide that configuration in different templates. So I could have a site one template with all the local objects that exist in site one and deploy that config only to site one and a site two local template to push the configuration only to site two. But every time I want to stretch object, that's the usual term we use, like a VRF that must exist between different uh, sites or a bridge domain that is extended between sites, in that case, I need to define this object in a template which is associated to multiple sites, which means I will push the configuration at the same time to all the sites. Now, as you see here, I could organize things in quite a flexible way, right? I could reference object inside the same template. You see here schema one as a template one where I associate an EPG one to my BD one, but I could also reference object across templates in the same schema. So BD1 is associated to VRF1 and VRF1 is defined in a separate template, which actually happens to be also mapped to a different tenant, like tenant common. It is quite common uh, to define the networking construct into a common tenant and have specific tenant policies referencing this common networking object. I can also reference object across templates in different schemas. So I have in this example, EPG1 in schema one template one that uses a contract C1, which is defined in schema two template two. So the fact that I define my objects in templates that are in different schemas does not mean that I cannot build policies referencing this object. As I said before, uh, schemas and templates are just a way of organizing uh, the object, the policies, as better fit your taste and your requirements. One important point to clarify is that all the templates and all the objects that are inside the same schemas uh, can be referenced more easily because I have a drop down list when I, for example, say I want BD1 to be associated to VRF1, I go in the VRF window of BD1 and I will see all the VRFs that are actually available for that tenant uh, or for tenant common that are defined in the same schema. If the, the VRF was not in the same schema, as is the case, for example, for BD2 belonging to schema two, I would have actually two digit letters of the VRF that I want to reference and associate to BD2. But still doesn't mean that being in different schema, I can still reference it is not uh, a problem. Every tenant, as I said before, can consume object from, from the predefined common tenant. Now, in order to decide what to do and how to deploy the object across schemas and templates, it makes sense that you also consider some of the scalability uh, values that we have. So for example, in MSO 224, we increase the number of templates that can be in a schema up to 10. There were five before. So that's something that you need to consider, right? How many templates can I have in the same schema to decide when to deploy another schema. Also, the number of objects that we support in a schema today 
with the MSO223 and later we, we support a thousand objects. And these objects are EPGs, bridge domain, VRFs, contracts, they all count like objects. The schema, if you look at the MSO, has a policy counter that counts for you the amount of object that we support. So you need to ensure that if inside the schema you get close to the thousand object, that's probably the time to start deploying a separate schema. You have flexibility to choose what best fit your requirements. But what I usually see customer doing uh, in a scenario, for example, where you have a multi-site domain with three sites, site one, site two, and site three, is to basically take a schema and associate the schema to a specific tenant, which means defining inside the schema all templates that are mapped to the same tenant, tenant one in this example. And once I do that, I will define a template which is only mapped to site one, and I will use that to define all the objects that are only locally defined in site one. So EPGs, bridge domains that are not stretched across sites. I do the same thing for a site two template and a site three template. And then I define one or more stretch template, in this example only one, which I use to define the object that must be define or configure or render uh, across multiple sites. In this example, this stretch template defines VRFs, contract, bridge domain and EPG that are existing at the same time across the three sites. I could get more flexibility and create a stretch template for uh, objects that are common to site one and two, a different one between site two and three. So you can get creative thanks also to the fact that, as we said, uh, we support up to 10 templates now in the same schema. Depending how many sites you have, it gives you quite a good amount of flexibility of how to deploy uh, these objects. So this is, is the typical deployment model I, I see. I see also customers that define a schema for a given tenant, all the networking object, and defining a separate schema for the same tenant, all the policy object, like EPG contract, right? But inside the schema, they still tend to follow this approach of having a, a site-specific template and a common uh, template associated to, the to multiple sites. Now, let's finish considering three different use cases for defining the policies and pushing policies. The first use case is what we call the greenfield deployment. Greenfield means that I introduce my multi-site orchestrator into uh, an environment, I join, I connect my sites to the multi-site orchestrator, and I start using the multi-site orchestrator to define configuration and policies for a new tenant that does not exist on the existing fabrics. So from a, the point of view of that tenant, uh, the site one and site two in this example are uh, greenfield because that tenant doesn't have any presence. That's the easiest thing to do because basically I create my new tenant on MSO, I define there my uh, templates, and here I show an example like I show you in the previous slide where I have a template associated to both sides and one template associated per site, and then I push down the policies, and this will allow to define site-specific objects for the tenant in site one, in site two, and the common object that, that exists across uh, site one and site two. So that's a very streamlined way of deploying policies because it's a greenfield uh, virgin environment from the point of view of the policy of the tenant. Scenario number two is the one where I already have an existing fabric and I have a presence of the tenant in the, with the with configuration on the existing fabric, and now I add a new site to my multi-site domain and I want configuration for that tenant to be extended to site 2. I want that tenant to exist not only in site 1 but also in site 2. It could be because I want to create an active active application environment or because site 2 is my out of region disaster recovery site, whatever the use case is. In that case, I can import configuration for the tenant that exists in site one. So I import that configuration from Epic into MSO, and then the object that I import, I organize them into a template, which is associated to site one and site two, and I will put there the object that I imported that needs to be extended to also to site two. So most, most commonly the VRF, and also the bridge domain and EPGs that are stretched across sites. 
I put the other policies that I brought in into a template, the blue one, which is only associated to site one. They represent the already existing object that already are there uh, in site one for the tenant. And then I create a new template for new policies that I want to define for site specific object in site two. And then I push back the configuration. And from that moment on, the tenant is basically inherited by MSO and all the tenant configuration, also new configuration that I can create, will be managed from the MSO perspective. And on Epic, you will see the symbol that tells you that this is a uh, tenant that now is managed by MSO and these are all the objects that are managed from MSO, which again doesn't mean you cannot go and change them on Epic, right? They are not locked, but there is a warning that you should not change them on uh, Epic because these are objects that were pushed from the multi-site orchestrator. So the multi-site orchestrator being the single source of truth should be the place where you go and define that policies. The last scenario, which is one a little bit more tricky, is the one where I already have to site existing, existing fabric site one, existing fabric site two, with a tenant that exists in both sites and I want to start managing that tenant from the multi-site orchestrator. This could be a scenario for customers that already deployed independent fabrics that are connected, for example, only layer three, or even with an existing layer two uh, DCI solution like OTB, VPLS, etc. And now they want to remove that old way of interconnecting fabric and use the multi-site approach. So they introduce MSO in this scenario. And at this point, I can bring in the tenant policies from both sides because that tenant exists in both sides and do the same thing I did before, which is organizing my policies that I bring in to templates associated to both sides for the stretch object and templates locally uh, and single associated to uh, the specific site. Now, this is doable and is possible only under the assumption that the policies for the same tenant in different sites have been deployed in a consistent way. And when I say in a consistent way, I mean with the same naming convention. If you call the same tenant with two different names in site one and site two, you will not be able to import the policies uh, into MSO and associate them to a single tenant, right? MSO doesn't have currently any merge capability for policies that may have conflicting naming convention, okay? So it's important to clarify that these import could happen from multiple brownfield sites at the same time, but only under the assumption that the naming convention is consistent. And then once I've imported my policy and reorganized the policy in the template, I push the policy back down and this will basically ensure that I start managing the tenant configuration across sites from the multi-site orchestrator. This ends the lecture part for this uh, portion of the multi-site training. Now we can go back to Joe that will show you some of this concept in action in his lab. Thanks for watching.